Welcome to another video from Gui Lao 60. You can tell from my background that I'm no longer in China. Wei Fong and I landed in uh, Canada on Vancouver Island in Nanaimo here about four days ago. It's uh, It was a long trip back. We brought Mimi with us. So Mimi, the little kitten that was discarded on the streets of Nanning, China with a little bit of rice noodles is now a permanent resident of Canada. Yes, and uh, she actually loves it. She sits by the window and watches the birds and the squirrels and the rabbits around the neighborhood. And uh, you, you want to see a cat with its ears perked up? Well, this cat has its ears perked up all the time and, and is just loving it. Um, everybody knows that we came back to Canada uh, because Wei Fong got sick. She, her cancer came back and uh, you know, it wasn't a decision based on money. Uh, we, we went to Chongqing and, uh, you know, she had her CT scans, she had her uh, bone scans, she had her uh, biopsies, she had radiation, uh, she was prescribed certain drugs from the Chinese doctors. And when we're in Canada here, I was going to say China, because I've, I've been in uh, in China for so long, it just seems like a, a normal thing for me to say. But uh, even though we are in Canada, she's still taking the drugs that she got in China. Uh, why is that? Because she's not... We have to be here for two months and two days before her Canadian medical insurance kicks in. All right, that, well, that's good, no, not a big deal. So we, we brought enough drugs back with us that she can be on her uh, treatment regime, I guess is what you want to call it, until that kicks in. We've already talked to a doctor here. And uh, yes, when I do, uh, when we do doctor appointments and whatever, uh, we have to pony up the cost for it. But, eh, you know, what's money for? Um, but, you know, this is bad news for us, but when we were in Shanghai, we flew from Nanning to Shanghai and then from Shanghai to Vancouver, but when we were in uh, Shanghai about midnight uh, in our hotel, we got a call from my daughter Miranda and uh, my dad was in for a hip operation in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Uh, it went okay, he got a little infection, they fixed it, then they shipped him back to Prince Albert uh, to, to heal up in the hospital in Prince Albert. He got pneumonia, they basically tried to get rid of that, they got rid of most of it, and uh, then he got pneumonia again, and uh, he passed away on January 25th. Dad was a really, really close person in my life. I talked to him all the time. He was my mentor, my go-to person for advice. He was one of those people that uh, not only was my father, but he was my one of my best friends. So this is this is tough. So, you know, with Wei Feng's cancer coming back and my dad dying, all within like a month and a half, it's like, oh, geez, you know. And it comes in three, so I'm just bracing for the la for the next one. It's one of those things that um, it, it's it's a it's been a tough road to hoe for for both Wei Feng and for myself. And as you can see from the background here, um, Nanaimo is a really pretty place. We've got seaplanes to take off. Uh, it's everywhere. It's, it's, uh, Vancouver Island is just a beautiful place. So uh, it's, it's one of those places that's really nice to, to, to be. Now, let's get back to my dad. What kind of a person was my father? Well, when we were kids, like dad, we had three boys. Or uh, I didn't. My dad did. Uh, my parents did. We had three boys and one girl. My sister passed away about six months after I, I retired and moved to China. Bad timing. I, I guess uh, that's one of the things that I've noticed over the years is uh, being an expat being a f somebody that lives in a foreign country um, you're not around for your family as much as you you'd like to be uh, I've lost a sister I've lost a mother I've lost an uncle and I've lost a father all 
in the same time period as I've been in China. Well, actually, Mum, I was in Japan when when Mum passed away, but I wasn't in Canada, and uh, you know that's one of the costs that uh, that you have to bear when you're uh, living in foreign countries. And uh, you know, I've 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 noticed that over the years that it's one of the things that I don't like about living abroad is that you're not there for your family. But back to what kind of a dad my dad was. Okay, when we were kids, you see, Dad's an old Norwegian. When we were kids. Oh, and Dad grew up skiing in Norway and, and whatever, and so we got skis for, I don't know, Christmas or whatever back when I was, I think, 11 or 12 years old. Well, anybody knows that uh, in Saskatchewan it's as flat as a, as a well, it's as, as flat as a table or, or as flat as a pancake or as flat as a whatever you want to call it. There, there are no hills, so these downhill skis, what are you going to do? Well, you see, what my dad did is uh, in his 68 Dodge Monaco, I remember that red one, uh, with a trailer hitch on it. What he'd do is he'd uh, tie a 50 foot long rope to his trailer hitch. Like we lived in Weldon, Saskatchewan, so we're out the boondocks, eh? Out, out, out in rural Saskatchewan in the middle of winter, 40 below, and uh, he'd, he'd, uh, he'd drag us behind the car. Like seriously, he would drag us behind the We're in the ditch skiing and and he get that car up to 30 40 miles an hour and we and we hit approaches we go flying and I, I remember lots of bloody noses and and uh, it was like toughen toughened us up type thing eh? but uh, you know he would do things like this if the cops caught us doing something like that or caught him because we were just kids I can just imagine the tickets or the the dangerous driving or undue care and attention tickets that they would have they probably would have taken his license away but back in those days they really didn't worry about stuff like that that's back in the, the early 70s but uh, yeah it was fun anyway uh, he would we would go fishing way up north we uh, I remember a time dad and me grabbed a couple of bottles of whiskey a canoe and we uh, canoed for a couple of days down the North Saskatchewan River to the forks um, we uh, you know we would go ice fishing in the winter time we would go fishing way up north we would do lots of things together sort of became friends more than well he was still my father but uh, he was one of my closest friends so as I say it's it's a tough road to hoe now that we're back in Canada uh, um, Wei Fong had her first doctor's appointment yesterday and they're going to refer her off to the oncology department and you know things are, are getting back to normal. I had to get my 2011 Tucson running when I got it's sitting for two and a half years. Dead battery, went and changed the battery. I got on a city bus, went to Canadian Tire, bought a battery, got back on a city bus and came back and put it in. And it'd be said two and a half years. So you'd think that the gas would be like turpentine. No, that thing, it just went, I turned it over and went to broom and just started right up. I, I have no idea why that would happen, but uh, it's just, I guess I live a clean life. Um, but, you know, getting back oriented into a country like Canada or any country when you've been gone for so long, it's it's been like four or five days of uh, banking and getting cars ready and getting doctor's appointments and just, uh, you know, dealing with all of the things and getting reoriented with the, with with your community. And uh, we're, we're still not done. We, we probably, I still haven't even dealt with my finances that I haven't uh, touched for over over two and a half years now so uh, that's that's the next thing on our list of things to do I'm, I'm doing this video sort of an upgrade and to show you how pretty it is here on Vancouver Island a cement truck on a barge you don't see that every day you know what I mean so the difference between uh, Canada and China is like night and day they're 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 totally two different uh, types of places here the first thing I noticed when I got out of uh, well out of the airplane in Vancouver but out of the airplane in Cassidy just south of Nanaimo was how fresh the air is like in Canada you have basically well, especially on Vancouver Island you basically have no pollution at all so 
that's something that uh, that we we look forward to is is uh, how crisp and clear it is in the near future for all of you guys out there that are Chinese watching my channel on 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 uh, Chinese social media uh, we're gonna be doing some crab and we're gonna be going to get some manila clams uh, we're going to be picking oysters we might even go and dig up a couple of gooey ducks you see these suckers here they grow they don't grow they they're they're on the beaches everywhere and you see these little holes and you dig down and uh, they've got a I don't know if you ever if you know what a gooey duck is it looks like a clown with a big dick <laughs> like seriously it, it does and uh, maybe I'll put a picture in here that I'll pull off the internet so you so you know and we're gonna go and grab a couple of those and those things here a friend of mine in uh, Tony in uh, Calgary said that they're paying a hundred bucks a piece for these things at a, at a grocery store so they're really expensive they're sort of a delicacy so we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff like that and we're gonna be doing a trip to Saskatchewan another thing dad left me as the executor to his estate so how did the third boy out of three kids the one that's a black sheep of the family see my older brother he went to university he's been an engineer for 30 40 years type thing uh, supposed to be a responsible character for sure uh, my next oldest brother Warren he was a, a immigration officer for a number of years until uh, he uh, went off on long-term disabilities got MS but uh, then there's me that just sort of bounced around all over the world and I became the responsible child that my dad would trust with the, with the dealing as the executor of his estate I have no idea how that happened how I became a legitimate character um, but uh, but it did happen so like I got to go to Saskatchewan I got to deal with that stuff and so we're gonna be tripping around here for the for the summer so stay tuned for some Canadian uh, I guess videos from Guaylao 60 oh yes you're still gonna get the Chinese opinion pieces you're still gonna get the political stuff from me you're 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 gonna get uh, a beer drinking attitude uh, I've got to drive home so I'm not drinking and it's early in the day here so uh, anyway that's an update to what's been going on in our lives we are back in Canada it's colder here than it is in, uh, in Nanning I noticed in Nanning it was 27 degrees Celsius today Oh, I miss that. But we'll get back there as soon as we possibly can. This is just a this is just a little uh, hiccup in our lives. And uh, as soon as we get back to uh, China, uh, there'll be more Chinese content. But uh, for now, it's uh, beautiful Canada, beautiful Wei Fong. She's over there. She'll be in the she'll be in future videos. I'll guarantee you that. And. Uh, and that's another video from Guaylao 60. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button. Don't forget to resubscribe and uh, put a couple bucks in the Patreon account. Life is expensive here. I spent $3,248 putting brakes into my Tucson yesterday. $3,248. It needed everything, right down to calipers. And oh man, I knew that was I knew that was coming. And uh, I lost the other key to the Tucson. I went to, to price it out, $187.50. That's just about a thousand RMB for a freaking key for a car to be you know, cut a key. But then it's got a computerized chip in it. But uh, uh, one thing I'm noticing here in Canada is it's way, way more expensive. Not just in China than it was two and a half years ago. What you could go to the grocery store and buy for 200 bucks two and a half years ago, now it costs 300 bucks. So inflation is a real thing here in Canada. Anyway, until next time, peace out. Bye now.